All right, let's move on to question three. Um, answer the following questions relating to the element aluminum. Uh, A, write the complete ground state electron configuration of an aluminum atom. Aluminum in its ground state is going to have 13, uh, 13 electrons. Um, so as long as we follow off boss principle, we should get this right. So 1s2, uh, 2s2, 2p6, and then 3s2, and then 3p1. That is 13 electrons. So that's the uh, ground state electron configuration. Let's go to B. Based on principles of atomic structure, explain why the radius of the aluminum atom is larger than the radius of the aluminum 3 plus ion. The aluminum and the aluminum 3 plus ion are going to have the same number of protons. The only difference is that the aluminum 3 plus ion is going to have three less electrons than the, uh, the normal aluminum atom. What that means is that these last three electrons are not going to be there. And these last three electrons are actually in a different shell. It's on the third shell. So if you get rid of the third shell, you're just going to be left with the first and the second shell which is going to mean that the radius is smaller. So the aluminum 3 plus ion has three less electrons, which means its electrons occupy the first and second shells as compared to the aluminum atom, which has electrons in the first, second, and third shell. All right, let's go on to uh, C. A certain plans to combine solid aluminum with an aqueous solution of silver ions. The student determines the mass of solid silver nitrate needed to prepare the solution with a specific concentration. In the following table, briefly list the steps necessary to prepare 200 mL of an aqueous solution of silver nitrate using only equipment selected from the choices given. Assume that all appropriate safety measures are already in place. Not all equipment or lines in the table may be needed. So we're given the first step, which is to use weighing paper to measure, and uh, measure the determined mass of solid aluminum nitrate on a balance. And so our next step would be to take that uh, silver nitrate and put it into the volumetric flask. Now, why would you use the volumetric flask? Well, if you use the 50 mil graduated cylinder, that's not enough. And also you don't want to use the 250 mil beaker because the beakers are uh, less accurate than the volumetric flask. So you want to use the 200 mil volumetric flask. So our second step would be to um, place the silver nitrate into the volumetric flask. And now the third step would be to fill up the volumetric flask up to the 200 milliliter mark. Now there's a reason you do the, uh, the third step before the second step. If you filled up to the 200 mil mark with water first and then added the silver nitrate, uh, the silver nitrate may, may make you go over the 200 mil mark. So you want to add the solid before uh, filling it up with water. And so our last step would be just to mix everything. All right, and that's it. So you would place the measured silver nitrate into the volumetric flask, fill up the volumetric flask uh, up to the 200 mil mark with water, and then mix thoroughly. Let's go on to D. After preparing the solution, the student places some of the solution uh, into a beaker and adds a sample of aluminum. The reaction represented by the, reaction represented by the following equation occurs. Um, so you have aluminum solid plus three uh, silver ions uh, producing aluminum three plus and three uh, silver solid. The following diagram gives an incomplete uh, particulate representation of the reaction. The beaker on the left represents the system before the mixture reacts. Complete the drawing on the right to represent the system after the reaction has occurred. Be sure to include one, the correct type and number of particles based on the number shown on the left, and two, relative spacing to depict the appropriate phases. All right, so we know that one, uh, Aluminum uh, solid reacts with three silver ions to produce one aluminum uh, ion and three uh, silver solid atoms. So we have how many? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight silver ions, which means this reaction can occur two times. If you notice, the aluminum solid is uh, not our, it's our excess um, reagent. 
your um, silver is really what's going to rep. Uh, uh, it's, it's it's what's going to determine how many times this reaction runs. And since you have eight of them, this reaction is going to run two times, which means uh, you lose two of these aluminum atoms, but you gain um, two of these uh, aluminum three plus ions, and you're going to gain six of the solid. So let's first start with the aluminum three plus. Uh, aluminum, you're going to have two of these, and I'm drawing them pretty small because they are pretty small. Um, aluminum three plus, and you're going to have uh, six of the uh, silver solid atoms also being formed. So let's draw those six. Uh, and these are supposed to be bigger than the aluminums because uh, they are solid. And then that's four, five, six. And uh, if you remember, two of the silver ions are not going to be used up. Remember, um, this reaction only runs twice, which means we use up six of these, but we still have, we had eight, so we have two left. So you're going to have two more of the silver ions left. So Ag2+, um, and then, oh, whoops, <laughs> these should be silver Ag. Um, sorry about that. So you have six of the silver uh, atoms, the solid atoms forming, and then you have two of these uh, silver ions left over. Um, it's hard to get the relative spacing right, um, but you can use the key here to you know make sure that you have the right spacing. All right, let's go to um, the next one. The next part. The student finds the standard reduction potentials given in the table, which are related to the reaction that occurs. E, using the standard reduction potentials, calculate the value of uh, E standard for the reaction. So your cell potential is the standard cell potential of your reduction reaction minus the cell potential of your oxidation reaction. So which one is the reduction one? Which one is the oxidation one? Well, if you realize your aluminum goes from a charge of zero to a charge of three plus. So aluminum is being oxidized. Um, and then the silver goes from plus one to zero, which means the silver is being uh, reduced. So if we go back, we want reduced minus oxidation. The silver is the one being reduced, so our E cell is 0 0.8 volts minus the oxidation which is the aluminum which is minus 1.66 volts which means our E cell is going to be 2.46 volts all right let's go on to F based on the value of your cell potential uh, would the standard free energy change of the reaction under standard conditions delta G be positive negative or zero uh, justify your answer. Well, since our value of E uh, standard is positive, that means our reaction is going to be spontaneous. And if our reaction is spontaneous, that means our delta G would be a negative value. So since uh, our cell potential is positive, that means spontaneous. And uh, a delta G, a negative delta G is correlated with a uh, spontaneous reaction. All right, since your um, cell potential is positive, that means the reaction is spontaneous and a negative free energy is correlated with uh, spontaneous reactions. Therefore, your change in uh, free energy is negative. Let's go to G, which is our last part. Once the reaction appears to stop progressing, would the change in free energy delta G be positive, negative, or zero? Well, if the reaction stops progressing, then that means our free energy is zero. It's the um, uh, it, it stops progressing because it's the lowest uh, energy point of the system, so delta G would be zero. Alright, so since the reaction stops progressing, the system has reached equilibrium, which means your change in free energy is equal to zero. And that was question three. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. Um, I have the rest of the questions in a playlist. It should pop up on screen. Um, Thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Peace.